Hello San Diego. My name is Isabel Gatthof and I'm the director and producer of the documentary film Moritz Daniel Oppenheim, The First Jewish Painter. When Paul Parietti from the San Diego Jewish Film Festival wrote me an email a few days ago uh, asking me if I would like to contribute something to the virtual programs of the uh, LF uh, CJJ of uh, San Diego, I was immediately enthused by this idea. In times of social distancing, the many benefits of digitalization and the social media become evident. And I think it's a great way not only to keep in contact, but also to encourage one another to um, stay at home, stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay strong. So um, it's actually tough times uh, that we are facing. And um, you have to know, I'm sending you this video message um, directly from Hanau, Germany which uh, happens to be my hometown and also the native city of Moritz Daniel Oppenheim, who later made history as the painter of the Rothschild and Rothschild of painters. But um, I'm afraid you uh, may have heard um, the city uh, about a month ago as a um, synonym and hashtag for violence, cruelty, hate and terror when on February 19th 10 innocent people uh, lost their lives and um, this is why <clears throat> this is why it's very important for me to have the opportunity to contribute uh, something to um, the virtual program being not only a filmmaker but uh, especially being a filmmaker from Hanau, because, um, you know, Moritz Daniel Oppenheim uh, celebrated its West Coast premiere about two years ago on, um, in February uh, 2018 at the San Diego Jewish Film Festival. And I've been traveling um, the world with Moritz Daniel Oppenheim. And, um, you know, I always wanted to spread um, his message of hope, his success story that actually started um, in 1800 when he was born in the ghetto of Hanau. And uh, then he became later on uh, not only the first uh, Jewish painter with an academic um, background and um, established uh, himself very well uh, among the bourgeoisie and like I already said he um, uh, made history um, being credited as the painter of the Rothschild and uh, Rothschild of painters and um, so you can imagine that it, um, it's terrible it's just terrible when all of a sudden um, Hanau um, is um, connotated with um, the opposite of um, interreligious tolerance and um, yeah just it's it's still difficult to find words for um, what happened there and so if you allow me I um, wanted to um, light a candle in memory of the 10 victims that um, lost their lives in the night of February 19th. So I want this light to be not only a light of grief, but also a light of hope. And in those dark times, I think um, light and hope is what we um, need most. And I will I will put this here and it shall, yeah, it shall shine as a light um, during this recording. And um, again, thank you very much um, that I have the opportunity to be with you here now. So allow me to get back to Moritz Daniel Oppenheim now. Uh, which happens to be uh, my first feature-length documentary film. 
uh, ever since graduating from the University of Television and Film in Munich, the HFF, HFF, Hochschule für Fernsehen und Film. And um, it all started in 2013, actually, in fall 2013, when I learned for the first time that the city of Hanau, the municipality, is planning to set up the first monument in honor of um, its most famous Jewish son in the very center, the core of uh, the city, the Forum, uh, which is also the uh, central bus station. And um, I heard the name uh, Oppenheim um, before, of course, but uh, which amazing uh, legacy and um, human being actually stands behind this name, which, which works of art um, was back then not yet familiar to me. And the more research I did on Moritz Daniel Oppenheim, I couldn't really believe that uh, there hasn't been done any um, documentary film uh, by then and when I spoke with friends about uh, Moritz Daniel Oppenheim and my uh, plans and intention to uh, dedicate uh, the world's first documentary film uh, to him also they were like ah yeah of course Oppenheim that's the guy with the atom bomb right <laughs> or some said ah yeah the archaeologist and um, you know there were Many, and there still are many Oppenheims and Oppenheimers, but uh, who actually was Moritz Daniel Oppenheim? That was the essential question um, that I wanted to answer with my movie. And it all started as a, let's say, a rather small regional project that then later developed into an international production, actually, because um, I was filming in um, Germany, of course, but also in France, where the direct descendants of Moritz Daniel Oppenheim live today, and in Israel because the Jewish, uh, sorry, the uh, Israel Museum in Jerusalem holds one of the biggest collections of Moritz Daniel Oppenheim's works. And also in Portugal uh, we were filming because um, the monument, what it was all about, uh, and uh, it plays a very special role in my film also, but I will get uh, back to that later. Uh, was actually manufactured in Portugal. So it was Germany, France, Israel and Portugal where um, the movie was shot. So uh, like I already said, it all started with the monument called uh, Moritz and the Dancing Image. It's a mutual work by the sculptors um, Robert Schad and Pascal Coupeau. It consists of two um, elements, th something very um, traditional, classic, figurative, and the other part is rather modern, abstract, and there's some, I would say, tension between uh, those two uh, objects. And um, you will see it in my film, how it actually looks like, but, um, well, maybe I can uh, give you a short glance of it with the model that uh, the artists were um, a manufacturing for the competition there actually was um, for um, this Oppenheim monument and Moritz and the dancing image this model won the competition and it was 2015 when uh, this um, installation uh, Moritz and the dancing image was finally inaugurated um, in Hanau and this is where the story starts and um, I had great protagonists that really contributed big deal to uh, the uh, film. Uh, I uh, interviewed internationally uh, renowned um, art historians such as Shlomit Steinberg, for example, from uh, the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. I, um, like I already mentioned, um, interviewed direct descendants of Moritz Daniel Oppenheim, Patricia and Stefan Levin, who are living in Paris uh, today, um, and also a descendant of the former rabbi at Oppenheim's times uh, here in Hanau, uh, in seventh generation, Rabbi Horowitz, Yehuda Aharon Horowitz. He was actually heaven sent, uh, like, um, you know, um, many um, things that 
developed and happened during the production because you have to know that Hanau is not only the native city of Moritz Daniel Oppenheim, it's also the native city of the Brothers Grimm. The, um, yeah, the Brothers Grimm from the fairy tales that collected the fairy tales all over Germany and uh, put them into a book. And yes, they are also Hanau born. So uh, that's why I often refer to the fairy tale, the star talers, uh, where a little girl um, is actually collecting with her apron um, the stars that uh, fell from the sky and turned into um, solid gold coins uh, as soon as they landed in her apron. And I was blessed in a similar way uh, with those amazing protagonists that I, um, had and the many stories, uh, personal life stories that were actually um, captured for the first time in front of camera um, within the production of Moritz Daniel Oppenheim. And uh, this is why I always uh, refer to this fairy tale because I feel like the universe was a very beneficiary uh, to me um, and the entire production which uh, started completely as a um, no budget uh, project um, because the um, let's say um, conventional means of financiation such as a, a film fund uh, contributing money or a co-production with a broadcasting station and so on um, unfortunately didn't work out but as um, like I already said there um, hadn't been a movie on Moritz Daniel Oppenheim uh, before and I really wanted to tell his story. This is why I said, okay, I do it uh, with uh, the enthusiasm and lots of um, passion that I have. Um, and I do my best and let's see how far I come. And at some point, the point of no return was actually crossed and there was no way back. And uh, the more I learned about Oppenheim and the more um, I learned about his outstanding career uh, within the context of Jewish emancipation in 19th century Germany, I thought it was more than about time to, you know, focus on the many success stories in German Jewish history. Because I think it would be a crime to forget the tradition that um, dates back centuries in Germany and um, if the darkest chapter of German Jewish history is overshadowing this it, it would be a, like a, a double crime and I definitely don't want the Nazis to win <laughs> not uh, back then and definitely not now and cross my fingers also not in the future um, I mean we can all do something against this and uh, no matter what profession you are, if you're a filmmaker, but okay, don't get me started. <laughs> you see, I get very emotional about this, especially, yeah, after what happened uh, here in Hanau. But uh, back to the movie. Um, so, um, yeah, um, four years of production. Um, after three years, we were uh, granted with a post-production fund of the... Um, Film Commission of Hessen, the um, federal state of Hessen and uh, their film fund. And there were um, small associations, um, local associations that donated um, money. And this is how we, you know, moved forward step by step. You know, you can have like the greatest Ferrari in your garage if you don't have fuel to, uh, to let it, you know, like drive. Um, it has to stay in the garage and this is what also explains uh, a bit the long duration of the production but uh, when we finally got um, the funding for the post-production uh, we managed uh, within uh, three months to complete the movie uh, for its world premiere uh, at the Jerusalem Jewish Film Festival um, in Israel which was amazing uh, to uh, premiere the movie there and uh, from there on the the journey actually started it's amazing it's uh, the european premiere took uh, place in um, moscow so um, i got to see uh, russia we have never been to before i would have never dreamed of um, that my movie my baby as i would put it because moritz daniel oppenheim and me 
kind of became one. It's funny when you Google Oppenheim, you uh, find um, images and articles uh, on me, uh, of me, and vice versa. So it's really funny. I mean, we spent so much time together, <laughs> so we really have some connection. And yeah, then I, I, I traveled to Australia uh, at the Jewish International Film Festival in um, Melbourne, the premiere took place. And then uh, I traveled to Sydney where the film was also shown. And um, this is, yeah, how it all started. And um, actually there are still um, premiere, national premiere screenings ahead. And that's awesome. That's really more than I, would have ever uh, dreamed of and again I really feel like this um, entire project uh, was meant to be and uh, yeah so um, let me tell you a little bit more about um, yeah the motivation and the um, narrative and the concept of the movie the biggest obstacle was in a way that um, my protagonist um, passed away more than 130 years uh, ago already. Consequently, I nevertheless had to somewhat emotionalize a protagonist um, representing Moritz Daniel Oppenheim, be it as an alter ego. So the idea goes like this. Inspired by the um, dualistic concept of the Oppenheim monument itself, on the one hand being very concrete, um, figurative, classical, on the other hand being rather abstract, uh, rather modern. This dualism, this um, tension between those two parts can be found in the narration of the film itself because two alternating um, narrative levels, on the one hand we have the interview uh, sequences and scene with um, art historians, experts on Oppenheim's art, descendants of Oppenheim and on the other hand we have the literal becoming of an artist, the becoming of Moritz Daniel Oppenheim represented by his small um, alter ego that later becomes uh, this huge um, uh, solid steel statue and it all starts with uh, brown wax. It looks a bit like, yeah, of course, like Earth. So you, of course you have this um, association with um, and God created Adam from the Earth. But in this case, it's it's wax and uh, it's the little Oppenheim. It's like a like a golem that gets life with, in this case, without the Aleph. <laughs> but um, this is how we actually um, follow the entire creative process of um, the statue and the becoming of Moritz Daniel Oppenheim on the one side completely without words because when we see how um, the creative process of the statue is developing we only hear music so it's the music that tells the story. On the other hand we have all the information and I want to make sure as it's a bit of um, as if a painting on a white canvas when uh, we talk about this epoch of German Jewish history I want to make sure that all the information is not you know being forgotten or uh, it's just too much to remember and so it's bit by bit so uh, whatever you have learned in those sequences you can um, digest while you can enjoy the beautiful music and uh, another thing regarding the soundtrack and the official music of uh, the film I wanted to let's say break with a certain I don't want to say prejudice but um, common idea or let's say urban legend that um, Jewish music is always klezmer. So I don't know how it is in the United States but here when it's about Jewish music it's always klezmer. Jewish music is so much more than klezmer and you can be sure that uh, Moritz Daniel Oppenheim and his contemporaries uh, here in the Rhein-Main area in Frankfurt and Hanau they were not uh, listening to uh, music uh, of the Städtel, they were listening to string quartets and uh, this is why I wanted to um, 
broaden the perspective on Jewish uh, music and of course music by um, Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi is Jewish music. I wanted to um, point out uh, with the movie that in Frankfurt or Hanau the music that um, Moritz Daniel Oppenheim and his contemporaries were listening to was definitely not music from the uh, Städtel of um, Eastern European countries, uh, from the Städtels. No, it was rather string quartets. And uh, Moritz uh, Daniel Oppenheim was a contemporary of Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi and also his um, unfortunately a bit less famous sister Fanny Hensel born Mendelssohn. I wanted to also um, set a monument for Fanny. You will hear it when you listen to the music uh, on the original uh, soundtrack, motion picture soundtrack of Moritz Daniel Oppenheim during the rolling titles because I fell in love with his, uh, her Noturno or Nocturne um, which is actually a piano piece that we adapted uh, for the first time as far as I know in music history for strings because um, I wanted to um, to I wanted the um, soundtrack to be dominated by a string quartet but not only classical music as you know the film is trying to build bridges from the past to the present all the time so I wanted to make it like a fusion a fusion of classical music string quartet and I was again so lucky and and blessed to um, have won over the um, Neue Philharmonie Frankfurt for uh, the string quartet. Uh, all the music was really completely newly composed on the frame and it was all live recorded in a studio and on the other hand for the more let's say industrial parts in the foundry for example when the melted steel you know um, is uh, in this um, yeah, industrial atmosphere and this for me shouted for um, electronic music so um, I worked together not only with the um, conductor of the New Philharmonic Orchestra of Frankfurt but also with a DJ uh, who specialized in electronic music and also is a music producer. So this fusion of let's say classic meets electro was just perfect to uh, build bridges uh, from the past to the present because this is actually this this modernism that I wanted to transport on all the levels that cinema is offering us um, both the visual level but also the acoustic level um, despite the fact that Moritz Daniel Oppenheim was a Biedermeier artist you can really see his um, paintings and uh, pieces of art as very very modern because um, uh, during his epoch the um, age of Jewish emancipation in 19th century Germany Judaism was really uh, changing um, the reform Judaism was uh, developing there was assimilation going on for me it's very important to um, extend the narrative of German Jewish uh, history beyond the Holocaust um, I really want, especially a young target group, uh, know uh, what rich history, uh, mutual history we actually have in Germany that dates back almost thousand years, thousand years of um, Ashkenaz. This is so unique and um, I think it's more important than ever um, to really understand uh, this way much better the catastrophe of the Holocaust, of what was lost what what is like what is gone forever and and to understand the rise and fall um, of the the um, equal rights that were finally gained after centuries in uh, 19th century Germany thanks to Jewish emancipation and this is why I think it's more important than ever to really focus on what connects us as human beings um, beyond all uh, ethnical, uh, religious or um, whatever border um, there might be or what might separate us. Uh, I think we really have to build more bridges, uh, more bridges than walls and fences nowadays 
and uh, so this is why I'm currently working on a school film which is um, actually a spin-off, a completely new project uh, to be shown in schools, mainly history lessons. I'm aiming at to, um, you know, find an entry via the, the revolution in Germany in uh, 1848 and um, yeah, to tell the story of Jewish emancipation with um, Moritz Daniel Oppenheim and um, his uh, success story and um, regarding other um, recent projects I can also let you know that I'm uh, currently working together with the co-producers of Labyrinth of Lies on a, a new documentary film for cinema with a working title uh, Fritz Bauer's um, Heritage, um, the Nazi trials uh, in the mirrors of time. So we are starting uh, in um, 1963 with uh, the first Auschwitz trial um, in Frankfurt and then um, ask the questions why it took so long that they are still now 90 year old or older uh, people standing in front of court now the um, ongoing trial in Hamburg for example is taking place here and uh, we want to find answers interdisciplinary uh, answers there's not just one explanation one uh, answer of course to this uh, question and that's great why we have uh, an entire movie, a uh, feature length documentary film to find answers uh, to that question. And yeah, I would stay, um, stay tuned. And uh, until then, uh, I can recommend you to have a look at my uh, Vimeo video on demand channel. My movie Moritz Daniel Oppenheim, the first Jewish painter is available as video on demand. On the occasion of Moritz Daniel Oppenheim's 220th birthday on January 8th this year in 2020, I published the director's cut with English subtitles and also Russian subtitles um, on the official Feinschmecker film Vimeo channel. So Feinschmecker Film is my production company that I founded shortly after graduating from film school in Munich and the idea and the name Feinschmecker Film uh, was born uh, during my semester abroad in 2010 uh, at Tel Aviv University in Israel. So everything is connected and uh, yeah, it would be amazing if you would spend some more time on screen <laughs> with Moritz Daniel Oppenheim um, as everybody has to stay safe uh, inside. Um, I would really much appreciate it. Uh, the film is available um, as download to own or um, to rent as a stream uh, for 48 hours. So um, have a look at this URL, this website that you can find here and yeah Hopefully I will have the chance to um, see uh, San Diego one day with my own eyes. I haven't been there yet, but uh, very much looking forward to it. Maybe uh, with one of my next movies, um, which uh, hopefully will also be shown again at the San Diego Jewish Film Festival. So um, this is it. That's all, folks. Best regards from Hanau, stay healthy and looking forward to hopefully seeing you all soon in person. Bye bye.